Hello, you're welcome. You're welcome onto my channel today, and it gives me great joy to observe you are viewing this video. Hi, I'm Professor Olayenka Akwale. I'm a lecturer in the university. On this channel, I do a number of stores, but all I do, you can cluster them into sociology, research, relationship, and migration. You're welcome once again. If you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly go ahead and click subscribe on your screen right now to join my family of subscribers. Elements of social of, of scientific thoughts. Elements of scientific thoughts. That's what we want to talk about in this video today. And I encourage you to stick around. This is a very important, very important, you know, topic in, a, in sociology or module, depending on the concept that is used in your, in your university or in your school. So these elements of scientific thought is a very important one to set the background, give strong background to students of sociology before or as they proceed, you know, into mastery of the of the of the subject matter of sociology as, as a discipline. So this in this in this particular course, it's expected that you will learn the history or you will teach the history of scientific thought, you know, in terms of the trajectories. You know the background, the evolution, the developments of of scientific thoughts. Scientific thoughts refer to the fundamental pronouncement, the fundamental study, the fundamental knowledge. You know, or, or, or ideas that shape. You know that over time that have been able to shape sociology profoundly, especially in terms of its methodology, to being considered a social science. And this is very important because. Um, as a social science course, because I must mention also that in some universities they teach sociology as an arts subject. In some university, as universities as as a management subject. In some universities as humanities. In some universities as social science, you know, discipline. But in all of these, it doesn't matter whether it depends on the intellectual or disciplinary orientation. Of that particular university, that's what will determine where they go to cluster. I know of some universities where sociology is considered humanities, some arts, some so in social sciences. In my university, where I'm primarily based, I have you know institutional relationships with different universities across the world. But my primary affiliation, where I'm based, particularly as a professor of sociology, we teach sociology. We are we are in the social sciences. And this has you know, its own reason. So it doesn't matter whether uh, I'm also a senior research associate in another university where the same sociology is, is situated in faculty of humanities. You see that? <laughs> yeah, I, it's the same sociology. I'm the same sociologist in different you know, relationship you know, uh, of the universities. So this, it depends on the orientation and the convenient, administrative convenience of those universities. Essentially, it doesn't change what sociology is and what we teach. We may have some of the orientations. So it, 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 this course, you know, teaches uh, about the history, the evolutions, the trajectories, the, the, the development, the emergence, the maturation of the scientific thought that is considered that we teach in sociology in the sense that it's fundamentally talking about the scientific status of sociology. How scientific is sociology? You know, and I have another video on this channel on uh, outside the sociology as a science. There's that video on this channel. So if you view that video, you will enjoy it in relation with this one. Because what are these thoughts? These thoughts will thoughts essentially in sociology are regarded as ideas, you know, bodies of ideas, beliefs, principles, orientations, you know, essentially ideas that are deeply philosophical and essentially met methodological. And overall disciplinary. So when we talk about thoughts in sociology, we talk about ideas that, that become institutionalized in the discipline. And this is very important for us to realize. Those ideas that have matured, that have come to be accepted as cornerstones of the discipline. These are what we call thoughts. So what are these thoughts that have engaged, that have discussed the scientific status of sociology? These uh, what we call, we describe as scientific thoughts. The ideas, the profound pronouncement, profound 
you know, philosophical positions that have shaped sociology as a science, you know, and how they have evolved across different intellectual era, across different disciplinary boundaries, across different institutional orientations over the years. So to the sense that they have become legit legitimized, accepted, nearly like a paradigm. These are, these are what we call, that's what we mean by history. So we teach about this history, the evolution of this scientific thought in this scholar and the composition of this scientific thought. What do they mean? What, what essentially do they embody? This, this scientific thought, what do they embody? What, what constitute what, you know, this scientific thought? So why we come talk about the history, the composition, the elements, the, the characteristics, the parameters, you know, the constituents of this scientific thought. And this is why we now talk about the main contributors of this scientific thought. Who are the, and this is where we now move to the issue of the founding fathers in sociology. So these main contributors, accepted contributors, uh, we, have, we now consider them as the founding fathers of sociology because it's their ideas that led to the emergence of sociology and maturation and development of sociology over time. That's why we call them the founding fathers. So it's through the founding fathers of sociology that we teach these elements of scientific thought. Because, if you, like you will see later on, many of these founding fathers, aside the fact that some of them gave, you know, engage in naming the disciplines at different times, a lot of them engage in methodological debates. How should we study human behavior? How should we study human action? How do we understand human society? How do we understand uh, the, the trajectories, you know, the contours, the nuances of human behavior to be able to understand human society. Don't forget sociology is the scientific study of society, broadly speaking. You know, that's, a, that's an elementary definition, but just for you to understand. And as in order to understand these human societies, we understand human behaviors in groups. We understand the group dynamics and how this affects how human beings behave and how this ultimately impacts human societies. So, and this is actually what the founding fathers of sociology this is what they engaged in over time. Do we study so, so human beings in terms of scientifically? Do we study it philosophically? Do we just theorize about it? Do we gather data at, at things, sui generis, according to Dukai? And do we gather data, come to describe uh, the sociology as a queen science? You know, and Weber gathered data, data in, in his understanding of Protestant ethics and the spirit of capitalism. These are things, because I will see drop videos on every one of these founding fathers. So I, I just want to give you strong background to this. You know, look at it, this, this is a course of elements of scientific thought. We also look at, you know, sociology and the developments of these thoughts and look at how these thoughts impact sociology from the past and contemporary sociology. You know, this modern, uh, the modern sociology, sociology today, benefited immensely from the th scientific thoughts of these founding fathers. Thus, we need to understand their elements, the elements of the scientific thoughts from historical perspective and ideas perspective and constituents perspective. So who are these founding fathers? Who are these main contributors to these scientific thoughts? And through, which, through, uh, through them, we'll be studying these scientific thoughts. You know, the first one I will mention is Ibn Khaldun. The Ibn Khaldun is considered as um, the fa a founding, the foremost, the first founding father of sociology through his concept of uh, al -Muran. Well, I will drop a video on Ibn Khaldun later and all the rest of them. A, a single, uh, is view one video per founding father. So stay tuned to this channel to get these videos and update yourself. But you will find that many textbooks on sociology, especially those from the West, from America, from Britain, from Europe, Australia, you may not find writings on Ibn Khaldun because many of them did not, they said they did not read Ibn Khaldun, they didn't write in English, and the standard for many is never, it, it was never an European or American or British. So they didn't really consider his idea. You only find few textbooks. You know, uh, from African sociologists, 
most works on Ibn Khaldun as a founding father of sociology, as the first person to write in a way we can call sociology, you know, was an African. You know, and uh, at least it was, it was not it was not from the main mainstream in, of idea production of Europe, America, or Latin, or, or, or Britain. So Ibn Khaldun, I know, can be considered a, an African, you know, a Northern African, if you like, historically depending on how you want to classify his place in the, in, in the past. But I will drop a video on Ibn Khaldun later on, where I will discuss him in greater detail. Then you have August Comte, who is commonly regarded as the founding father of sociology. Comte, you know, was as, is commonly as you will find all textbooks on sociology describing Comte, August Comte as a founding father of sociology and the first person to name sociology as we know it today. Then you also have Emily Dukheim. Dukheim is also another founding father and he struggled with essentially to give sociology a scientific orientation in terms of data gathering methodology. You have um, Takot Parsons, Takot Parsons, another founding father's Karmax, another founding father. These founding fathers are those people whose writings, whose thoughts, whose ideas led to the emergence, to the evolution, to the maturation, to the, to the comp composition of sociology as we know it today. So you have Karl Marx, you have Max Weber, Max Weber, you know, you have Cooley, you have Bronislaw Malinowski. You know, depending on how we want to proceed, there are many other people uh, that I still have profoundly influential in terms of sociology uh, becoming a discipline and continuing to be relevant as a science. You know, till today. So, but I will draw videos on this I've mentioned later on for us to be able to understand more in terms of sociology. So, like I've said earlier, you know, you in this course we also look at how scientific is sociology. How do we call, call? We know that the natural sciences, the physics, the chemistry, you know, the biology, uh, all of these are considered science. So, how do we now say sociology is a science when it's not in the natural sciences? This, this, um, we have to we will engage in this debate. It's a major debate in this in this course. Anyone teaching element of scientific thought must teach sociology as a science and look at the debates also from the perspectives of these founding fathers. There's a video on this channel, like I said, view it. Uh, and uh, we, in this element of scientific thought, we also look at the limitations of sociology as a science, as a social science, compared to the natural science. What are the limitations? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? And how do we do sociological analysis? I have video, a video on models in sociological analysis. So from this element of scientific thought, how does this impact the analysis that we do in sociology, and how are we meant to analyze in society, uh, analyze society and data and conduct research in sociology? So research is a core component of the scientific thought because the idea of being scientific is because of our research to be able to understand human action objectively. Interesting. I hope you enjoyed this video. I actually enjoyed myself. Please subscribe and share as widely as possible. Bye for now.